Hi, I'm Clint Finley with SiliconANGLE. We're here live on theCUBE, which is our streaming broadcast uh, internet TV show. We cover all the, the latest and greatest in technology. Today we're in San Francisco at the first Node Summit, which is dedicated to Node.js, which is an emerging uh, development platform. I'm joined today by Arno Kazimir. He's the founder of Observit. Uh, Arno, can you tell, tell us a little bit about Observit? Um, Observit is a real-time analytics service that not, it's not analyti analyzing your website, but your users, so you're actually insert a one line of code in your page, and you can see the user's mouse everywhere on your page, and see the clicks, and uh, scroll down the page, and you see it reflected on your own browser. So it's just like watching over the shoulder of your user. And so, would you uh, compile a lot of statistics from this, or is this just, uh, uh, you re record a lot of the interactions? Uh, sort of, how, do, how does the, the end user, the, uh, who's analyzing the traffic, how do they use it? Um, we we're sending all the events to our backend, and then you can replay it, just like a separate session, or it gets aggregated as heat maps. Okay. And so you were the one of the winners of uh, Node Knockout, the most yeah. recent Node JS development competition. Which categories did you win in? Uh, we won overall, solo, and utility. So you developed the original one yeah. solo, all, all, all in yeah, your own. Solo. Okay. Uh, what's your, your background before starting this project? Um, I'm originally a designer, and then I uh, moved from designing to the front end. And then when Node started getting uh, traction, I moved to Node. Okay, so you, uh, you're you solving the sort of problem that you would you would face then as a, yeah. as a web developer, wanting to Definitely. know how people are interacting with sites and applications. Yeah, how they're doing on your site, and, and what is working, and what is not working. Okay, how, how users are converting on your website as well. How does uh, how do you use Node.js in this? Um, our complete services runs on Node.js. We're using Socket.io for the real-time connection between uh, the user and our server. Mm -hmm. And we're using Node Canvas to generate heat maps. And we're using the Q service from LearnBoost to process all the information in real time. Hey, is this something that the end user has to opt into, or is this something that it just they, it just starts getting recorded? It just starts getting recorded, so you have to put a little privacy notes in your page that users might be but monitored. The, and so this is all done in, in JavaScript, so there's nothing that the end user has to even download. It's no, just part of... Just one line of code in your page and you're done. How, how well does it perform then? Does it slow the site down? Um, it doesn't slow down the site, because we're using WebSockets to send over the information. But of course, you have a little performance hit because you have to download one extra script on your page. Well, what about on the on the users end? Does it? Uh, uh, does you, it? You won't feel any latency when you're moving around on a page. Okay. Will it will it increase the CPU usage or anything like that? No, nope. not not noticeable. Not, not a bit. Yeah, maybe maybe like one two percent. But okay, it's not noticeable. So, uh, where are you going uh, with this with this application now? I know you're you're part of uh, the the node competition here. Yeah. Uh, so are you looking for funding? Do you have yeah, we're funding? Def we're definitely looking for funding. We're currently just bootstrapping uh, the application. And we're just, uh, we're hoping to build it out as a complete service. And uh, by looking for investors, we can just push out uh, the public release sooner. What's, what's the business model going to look like? Will this be sort of a freemium service that people can, you know, you have an entry level tier? Yeah, we have an entry level that's like 100 recordings and then uh, you have to pay for a monthly fee. Okay. Uh, what's on your roadmap for the, for the development? Is there any, uh, do you have any uh, longer term vision for, for what else you want to do with yeah, it? Yeah, we definitely want to continue aggregating the data and getting more useful data out of it, like uh, where your users all are dropping, so you don't have to follow one session to find out, but just uh, an aggregated view of possible interesting sessions for you. And we want to go uh, mobile. It's the new hot thing, so touch, following touches mm -hmm. and uh, emulating that as well. Okay, so I want to go back a little bit uh, to your background, because you said you started out as a designer, and then yeah. you started doing front-end development, and now you're doing back-end development with Node. How hard was were, were each of those transitions? Um, from designing to front end was quite easy because I just always wanted to have my designs pixel perfect. So 
you just have to do it yourself if you want a pixel perfect uh, web pages. And then yeah, Node came, and I just wanted to move on, keep on learning, and uh, it was just a smooth transition from front end to back end. It's just the same language everywhere, which makes it really easy to work with. Is the the whole callback model is that hard to learn? Um, I don't think so. It's just something to get used to. But once you know how it works and what kind of issue you're going to run into, like like these funky uh, call stack trees uh, with nested callbacks everywhere. Because if you just know how to avoid it, it's just simple. Were there, as you were developing Observe It, uh, did you run into any big stumbling blocks with Node, or did it did everything just work pretty seamlessly? Um, the only problem that we had was with hosting that they're not all supporting web sockets, so that's something uh, we were bumping against because the web socket spec kept changing and changing, and not every hosting company can keep updating their stack to uh, support the current WebSocket. Right, and well, not all browsers. Well, uh, are all the major browsers supporting WebSockets now? Yeah, I know true. Mozilla took it out for a while, but they put it back in. Yeah. Uh, Opera is supporting it now? Opera is supporting it, okay. uh, Chrome, Safari. Uh, has, the, has the development of it stabilized then, of the spec? Um, the spec is finalized, so that's, okay. uh, that's great news. But there yeah. are always some issues with cross-browser support, even with WebSockets. Okay. There are bugs everywhere, so okay. you just gotta be aware of those issues. So but, uh, that's that seems more like it's more of a front end issue rather than a Node.js issue. Yeah, that's or not true. even not not a front end issue, but just yeah. But you also may got to make sure that the, the, that your back end of Node is up to date with the with all the different WebSocket protocols, because we got uh, really old versions of Safari that's using like Draft seventy five and uh, the newer one using uh, the latest WebSocket specifications, and you want to support them all to have a great browser support range. Okay. Well, uh, that's all the questions I have. Uh, is, is there anything else you wanted to, to let our viewers know about? No, they can sign up uh, for a beta on uh, beta.observe.it, and uh, we will be rolling out a beta next week, slowly. Great, well, good luck with the beta. Yeah, thanks. Right. We're gonna take a break.